Am I the jerk for not wanting to adopt my dying ex-girlfriend's child? I'm a 31-year-old male and I met my ex-girlfriend who's 29 on a dating app seven years ago. She had a son, six months old at the time. She was with multiple guys and ended up pregnant. She still doesn't know who the biological father is, but it wasn't that much of an issue since she seemed like a great person and we had a lot in common. After a few weeks of chatting and talking online, we went on a first date and had a great time. After that, we just started hanging out whenever she could, and shortly after, she introduced me to her son. A few months into our relationship, we moved in together to save money since both of us were renting at the time. I started helping her take care of her child whenever I could, and we really just grew fond of each other. He even started calling me Papa, and we just went along with it since my girlfriend didn't mind. Almost five years into our relationship, she told me that she wants to break up because I became a boring person and not an active person like I used to be. We used to to go on hikes and travel around the country on the weekends and also that I work too much now. It was a rough time after that and I had a hard time accepting it, although not as hard as having to explain to a five-year-old that he'll no longer be seeing his papa. But I managed to get over it after a few months, found a better job that allowed me to work remotely and had a lot of free time so I managed to explore a few other countries. A few days ago, I get a call from my ex. She said that she is sick and in the hospital. They removed one of her breasts, but she recently found found a tumor in her other breast and will need to have it removed as well. She's scared that she might die if it doesn't work out and asked me if I would be willing to become her son's legal guardian and adopt him since she has no one else to ask. I live a different lifestyle now. I travel a lot and I invest in myself. So I told her no. I can't do that. She told me that her son misses me and would love to see me. But I said no again. And she started crying and calling me names before cutting the call. I talked to my sister and my parents about this. And they told me that it's a really messed up thing to refuse this. After all those years I spent with them. I feel like total trash now. Am I the jerk for not wanting to adopt my dying ex-girlfriend's child? Man, this is a pretty sad situation to be in. I'm assuming the ex-girlfriend probably tried figuring out who the biological father was before reaching out to her ex-boyfriend. But as a lot of people responded to this by saying, why wouldn't she ask some of her more active ex-boyfriends? If that's the reason she broke up with him, that's what they wonder why she wouldn't ask that of them. But maybe that's just because of all the people she's dated, the son was most attached to him and being active isn't necessarily a good indicator that it's going to be a good parent in case something happens to her if she does pass away. But passing away at that early of an age is is such a tragic thing and for the son to be that young without any one to be his guardian the whole situation is very very difficult it is a little surprising that his family is just so completely one-sided about this not considering the other end of it by saying that when he talked to his parents and sister they said that he was really messed up to refuse this just straight up but the op is probably wondering you know if the kid has been missing him for these last few years why the mother hasn't set up something to reach out or to let him meet him or anything. And from the way that this plays out at the end, when she asked him to be the guardian of him, and then he said that he can't do that, it seemed like she didn't completely accept that answer right away because she ends up saying that her son misses him and would love to see him. But it was only that she started calling him names once he said no the second time. So maybe she thought that if the OP just saw the kid again, it would have a greater chance of reigniting the kind of relationship they had before. But in this difficult situation, let me know what you would do if you were here and is the OP a jerk or not? Am I the jerk for not letting my ex pick up our daughter a day early so she can see her dog before it's put down? I'm a 29-year-old female and I have a 9-year-old daughter, Claire, with my ex-husband, Brian. Brian has Claire Wednesday through Saturday and I have her Sunday through Tuesday. When we were together, shortly after Claire was born, Brian got a dog. This dog was not young then, 6 or 7 years old and now must be ancient. Claire loves this dog and I've tried to indulge that as much as possible and then the days I have her, Brian will let Claire video call with him and the dog, which I think is a bit extreme, but to each their own. Brian contacted me this morning saying that he had to put the dog down tomorrow and asked if he could pick up Claire a day early so she could say goodbye. I told him I didn't want to do that and didn't think it was a good idea to go against court ordered custody. And since he wouldn't watch her when I had a work emergency, I don't see why this is any different. He said I was being overly dramatic and petty and 
cruel to not let Claire see her dog before putting it down. I don't think I'm wrong because we've already set the standard that we're sticking to the court ordered custody. But he sent me several texts saying I should let Claire be there and even told her what was going on, which in my opinion was overstepping and I don't think it's right for him to contact her behind my back about something involving our co-parenting. Claire is also upset at me now and I'm wondering if I'm being a jerk now that she knows. So am I the jerk for not wanting to let him pick her up a day earlier than usual? Brian, the OP's ex-husband, seems like he's totally on the right. She's being petty about a previous scenario. In order to get even with him, he's not letting the daughter go there. But this isn't really about her or the husband. It's about the daughter who cares so much about this dog that she would want to FaceTime a dog. I mean, if she doesn't allow her to say goodbye to the dog, when the daughter knows the OP could have allowed it, the daughter is probably going to hold on to this for the rest of her life. I mean, she clearly loves this dog. It absolutely has nothing to do with sticking to what they've agreed to for the court ordered custody and trying to go tick for tack in the whole history of their relationship. It has to do with letting Claire see the thing that she loves before it is put down, regardless of everything else going on. But somehow the OP doesn't seem to see that. One of the top responses was somebody asking the question, what if a relative died? Would you say, oh, sorry, can't go to the funeral. It's not on the schedule. These are the things that drive kids apart from their parents. Don't be the jerk parent. So let me know what you would do if you're in this situation, either as the mother or the father. And do you think the OP is a jerk or not? Am I the jerk for wanting to tell my stepdaughter's dad about the cameras my wife planted in his house while he was away? I'm a 34 year old male and I got married to my wife, Claire, two years ago. She has a six year old daughter, my stepdaughter, that she shares custody of with her ex-husband. Husband Adam. So Adam has not dated anyone ever since he and Claire got separated. Claire always talked about how this was a good thing because she believes that my stepdaughter is better off without a witch stepmom to boss her around and do her harm. Then Adam started seeing his now girlfriend about eight months ago and Claire was not happy about it. In fact, she was livid that Adam introduced my stepdaughter to his girlfriend so soon. Claire demanded meetings with Adam's girlfriend to test and see what kind of step mom she would be for my stepdaughter. I didn't give it much attention because of the drama and always having a mother-in-law involved as well. However, I recently found out that Claire installed several cameras in Adam's house while he and his girlfriend were away on a trip. Claire has the key to Adam's house because most of my stepdaughter's stuff is there. Keep in mind that I found out by looking at the chat Claire had with my mother-in-law, so she was in on it too. It irked me because this is a total breach of privacy, but when I confronted Claire, she said she did this because Adam's girlfriend was going to move in soon and she wanted to see how she treats my stepdaughter. I told her this was wrong, but she said it was all temporary till Adam's girlfriend is in the clear. I still wasn't convinced and suggested she remove the cameras because of the huge legal troubles once Adam finds out, but she lost her temper on me saying that I should stay out of it because clearly I don't care about my stepdaughter's well-being and happiness. But she had no evidence or even reason to believe Adam's girlfriend might mistreat my stepdaughter. Claire said she just wants to double check and Adam does not need to know. But I disagreed and said that I will tell him if she won't remove the cameras, which made her lose it on me and get my mother-in-law to shut me down and get me to stay in my lane, but I just couldn't. Claire said that if I tell Adam, then we're going to have a problem and urged me to mind my own business because Adam isn't more important than my relationship with her. So I shouldn't even entertain the idea of telling him and upsetting Claire, who is just trying to make sure her daughter's future stepmom isn't some witch stepmom in the making. I still want to tell him, but given Claire's reaction, I'm going to get hell for this, and it may not be worth it since me and Adam aren't on good terms. So, am I the jerk? This is one of the most obscene breaches of privacy you could possibly even muster up to even think of doing. You're going to go into someone else's home that trusted you enough to give a key to their home and then secretly put cameras in there? I mean, how is that not eventually going to get 
found out one way or another and she's saying it's only temporary so what's going to happen she's going to wait until they're gone again and then take the cameras out what if they never leave on a trip for a year or two you're just going to continuously have cameras on them the entire time this seems totally wild and very illegal it is a shame that she feels that she can't trust adam enough to know that he's going to put her daughter in a situation where she won't be mistreated but you never know maybe she had a bad experience with adam's judgment in the past or maybe she's just mistrustful of everyone the whole situation would be a lot more simplified if she could trust adam's judgment to not put her daughter in a situation where she could even potentially be mistreated in other words that you trust his judgment for whoever is going to be the stepmom to be someone that would be loving and caring to the best that he could possibly figure out himself without totally invading their privacy in one of the most fundamental ways possible so there's actually an update to this and that is that he decided to tell him he says there is no way this is going to end well for claire no matter how hard she tries to downplay the situation yes i'm a coward but that is her opinion i told her i was not going to get caught in the middle of this whirlpool but she insisted i was the one trying to get involved still ignoring how messed up her actions were she can go ahead and turn every argument into a screaming match where i'm the one to blame but i'm getting sick of it and as some people have pointed out i'm pretty sure that if he knew about this and did nothing to stop it that would probably also fall on him in some sort of being complicit type of way but let me know what you would do if you're in this situation and is the op the jerk or not for telling adam about the cameras that are secretly stored in his house am i the jerk for being upset that my fiance spent all the money for my wedding dress and our future house i'm a 25 year old female and my 27 year old male fiance are getting married soon the wedding is in two months and we still have to get a wedding dress and we're planning on moving into a house shortly after getting married two weeks ago my fiance had his bachelor party i come from a fairly wealthy family so we received a generous monetary gift from my parents to go towards the wedding and as an early wedding gift for any extra that we didn't spend my fiance and 10 of his friends went to vegas for the party and my fiance and i had agreed on a one thousand dollar limit not including hotel and plane fees the day after the party i received a call from the bank and found out that my fiance spent the entire gift for my parents on gambling and lost all of it this was disappointing because he had struggled with a gambling addiction in the past but he has been doing really good the past couple of years we had an argument about this when he got home and he has been really upset with me because he says i should understand that he was struggling and this will always be a temptation for him i have no idea how we're going to pay for the wedding dress i'm supposed to get much less contribute to the house and i honestly have no idea what to do right now he thinks i should just get a cheaper wedding dress but i don't think i should have to because this is his fault not mine am i the jerk for being upset that my fiance spent all the money for my wedding dress and our future house gambling problems can be totally life ruining as we've seen several times here on the channel through a lot of these different stories everything in your entire life can be totally great until a situation like this pops up that has to do with gambling and then everything is totally crushed if there was a gambling problem like this to begin with it doesn't really make sense why they would choose las vegas to be the place where they do this party in the first place i mean if that was the problem if this was even a possibility because it wasn't mentioned until after the fact then why didn't they go somewhere in the woods or somewhere on the beach or somewhere that has no way that you can gamble even if you wanted to one of the last things he says is that she should understand that he has this temptation that is never going to go away i think his exact sentence was that she should understand that he was struggling with this and will always be a temptation for him but yet they still chose for this event to be there some of the top responses to this actually mentioned putting the whole wedding on pause someone said you need to screech the brakes on the wedding gambling addict who still gambles absolutely do not tie yourself financially to this man the fact that he blames you and saying that you should understand all of this would be a struggle for him is unacceptable who on earth decided that someone with a gambling problem should go to vegas for his stag and that's before you even get onto him for being a jerk for using up the wedding budget on something for him do not marry this man so let me know what you would do if you're in this situation and is the op a jerk or not